Hey, we're the creators of Logue, so we know that building deep learning models can be slow and complicated. It can be difficult to figure out where to get started, there's a lot of technical things you need to learn, and even when you're all set up, it's hard to visualize and understand what you're doing. So we created an easy to use tool to make the whole process simple and understandable. Loeb lets you build custom deep learning models, quickly train them, and ship them directly into your app. Everything's done through a straightforward visual interface without any code. So in this video, we're gonna show you some interesting examples of things that people have built using Loeb, and then show you how easy it is for you to build your own custom deep learning models, even if you've never done this before. So for starters, Loeb doesn't require you to install anything to get started, and it runs on any platform. You just go to loeb.ai in your browser and you log in with your Google account. We start you off with a few demo projects so you can get the hang of how everything works. And to help you get inspired, we've got a bunch of examples over here you can check out. Let me show you a couple of these. So Loeb can learn to understand what's going on in images. This example was taught to look at what face a person's making and then turn it into an emoji. We can go down here in the corner and try this out with our webcam. So I can smile. I can frown, I can even kiss, I can do stuff with my hands. All right, so in a minute, I'll walk you through how easy it is to build a project like this from scratch. But first, let me show you a couple more of these examples. Loeb can also learn to understand how multiple objects are interacting in an image. This is able to look at a picture of a person pointing to their face and not only figure out exactly where the tip of their finger is, but also what part of their body they're pointing to. So why don't we try this one out too? All right, so you can see me pointing to my nose. I can point to my mouth. I can point to my eye, my ear. All right. Let's check out a couple more examples. So Loeb can also learn to understand other types of information, like sound. This was taught to listen to different types of instruments being played and identify the type of instrument it is. So this one's a ukulele and this one's a guitar. You could imagine this being used for a tuner app that could automatically change its settings based on the instrument being played. All right, we've got a couple more here. Loeb can also learn to generate new images. This was created by an artist who took photos of thousands of different flower petals and then taught Loeb to generate completely new petals with similar characteristics. Up here is an original real flower petal and down here is one generated in Loeb. It's amazing how realistic these look. Loeb can also learn to calculate precise numbers. So this is able to look at a person holding their hand up and calculate exactly what angle it's at. Let's try this one. Okay, so you can see as I change the angle of my hand, the angle changes right along with it. Okay, let's look at a couple more of these. Loeb can also learn to understand large amounts of complex data. In this project, a group of architects use Loeb to look at 3D models of houses along with metadata about the structures and determine the style of building. So you could imagine this being integrated into a future CAD software to help assist architects when designing. Now Loeb can also learn to see what's happening in videos. This is able to look at a video of a person speaking different words and figure out what they're saying just by reading their lips. So imagine being able to silently lip a question to an assistant on your phone without worrying about disturbing the people around you. Loeb can also learn to find the location of multiple objects in an image. So this was taught to find all the faces and hands in an image and draw boxes around them. Let's try this one out. All right, so you can see my face over on the right and I can see my hand. I can see even two hands. And when I change the shape of my hands, it also changes the shape of the boxes. All right. So let me show you one more here that I created. So I live in an off-grid house, which means we have a well that pumps water into this big storage tank. And on the outside of the tank, there's this crude gauge made up of a PVC pipe attached to a string and a pulley and a float inside of this tank. So basically when the water level in the tank goes down, the pipe on the outside goes up. To help keep track of our water usage, I set up a nest cam pointed at the tank and taught Loeb to find the different elements in the gauge and then tell us how many gallons of water we have left in the tank. 
So you can see down here a bunch of different examples I collected of the gauge and different lighting, day and night, at different levels. So then over here in the image, it's been able to figure out where those different elements of the gauge are and then calculate how many gallons of water we have left in the tank. And so once a model's been trained in Loeb, it can be easily integrated into an app by either downloading a CoreML or a TensorFlow file. These can run directly in an app on device without any internet connection. Or you can integrate your model using Loeb's developer API. Code snippets are available in several different languages. So for example, if we were developing a web app, we could select JavaScript, then copy and paste the code into our app. It will send Loeb an image, run it through your model, and then send you back a result all over the air. So using the Loeb API along with the Nestcam API, I was able to create this website where I can go and see a live feed of how much water we have in the tank. I even have this graph down here at the bottom of our water usage over the last week. And so this has been really useful for us. All right, so you can check out the rest of these examples at our website, lobe.ai. But now I wanna show you how easy it is for you to create your own project from scratch. So back over at the project screen, let's go over and click the plus button to create a new project and get started. Now let's go over to the finder where I have this folder. So we thought it would be fun to try to create something similar to the first example I showed you, where you could make faces and turn them into an emoji. But this time, let's try to do it with hands. So earlier, we took a bunch of pictures of people holding up different hand signs, then created folders for each of the corresponding emoji, and then organized the images into them. We'll use these examples to teach Loeb the different hand signs and what they look like in real life. So now that we have this folder, all we need to do is drag this over into Loeb, and all of our examples start uploading. Loeb helps you get started quickly by automatically building you a working model based on your training data. So you can either use this as is or as a starting point to build off of. And once all your examples are finished uploading, Loeb gets to work and immediately starts training your model in the cloud on a state-of-the-art machine learning server. Up here in the corner, you can see how long it's been training for, the number of examples it's trained on, and the overall accuracy. In the middle is the brains of your project and what's called the model. The model learns to take an input, process it through a series of smart building blocks we call lobes, and then output a prediction over here on the other side. These two green lobes here are training examples, the hand image and the emoji. And down here at the bottom, we have all of our examples and what we call the lesson. These are what we use to teach our model what we want to learn. You can think of these as a set of flashcards. So during training, the model is shown an example image, it guesses what the answer is, and then it's shown the correct answer. Then the model makes adjustments to the way it processes the image and over time improves its accuracy. You can click on any example in the lesson and see how it's performing in the model above. And you'll also notice the visuals update live as training progresses and the accuracy improves. You can even see an interactive graph of the accuracy over time, so you can scrub over any point and see how the model's performance is evolving. All right, now we've got a complete working model here, but I still think there's a couple improvements we can make to help it learn quicker and improve its accuracy. Let's go up and pause learning while we make a couple changes. So for starters, remember earlier I showed you that model that was able to find hands and faces in an image? Well. Wouldn't it be great if we could use that model to bootstrap this one? Well, we actually can. So if we go down here and click this plus button, we can open up the Loeb library. It contains hundreds of building blocks, everything from high-level, easy-to-use lobes to advanced Keras functions to low-level TensorFlow math. And all of these can be connected together to improve existing models or create entirely new ones. Models created in Loeb can also be published into the library and then reused by anyone, letting people chain together multiple models, almost like lobes in your brain. So here we can actually drag out the hand and face lobe and connect it at the beginning of this model. So we can go ahead and drag the hand and face lobe up here, then plug our image into this first, then connect this to our model. Okay, and... Here we go. So right now it's finding the face in the image, but we can change that to the hand. And now it's gonna find the hand, crop it out, and ignore everything else in the image, which will make learning this problem a lot easier. 
Now the next lobe in the model here is Randomize Image. This helps you get more mileage out of each example by generating many new random variations of the original image. You can click on this button up in the corner and preview different variations of the image. This will help our model learn to deal with a wider range of real-world scenarios like different lighting and hand orientations. We can also go over here in the settings and control how the image is being adjusted. So for this problem, we want our model to work with both left and right hands. So we can go ahead and check flip horizontal. And now our model will be shown all of our examples in what looks like both left and right hands. So it will recognize the emoji regardless. The next lobe is detect features. This helps us see the image and pull out the important features in the hand like shapes, edges, and textures. It does this using a deep convolution neural network that's pre-trained on thousands of natural images, so it already knows how to see the world out of the box. To better understand how this works, you can double-click and go inside to see all of its sublayers. Each layer visualizes what it's seeing, so you can gain some insight into what it's learning. And if you're a more advanced user, you can control any of these low-level settings, and even add or remove layers. So why don't we add one more layer here? We can make room for it, then go over to the lobe library and grab a convolution layer. Drop it in here, connect this together, and there we go. Okay. Now the next lobe here is generate labels. This lets us interpret the features we found in the previous layer, and then learn to do something useful with them. So it's learning when it sees this particular set of features in a hand, it's probably this emoji. And then it outputs its prediction over on the other side. You can also double click to go inside of this loop. This is made up of several fully connected neural network layers. And once again, you can see how the information is being processed at each layer and change any of these advanced settings. So why don't we go increase the size of this second layer so it can learn a larger amount of information. All right, I think we're all set here. So why don't we go back up and click resume learning and this will pick up where it left off and finish training our model. Now this will take a little while to finish training, but I've actually got a fully trained version of it over in the examples. So why don't we go check that out? So let's go over here, open up emoji hands and go down here and try this out with our webcam. All right, so you can see my hand here and you can see when I put my fingers together, when I spread them apart, I can do OK. So you can imagine an app where someone could send you a thumbs up or a peace sign just by doing the hand gesture. So that's a brief tour of Loeb. There's a bunch more examples you can check out at our website, loeb.ai, and also be sure to sign up for our beta while you're there. We're really excited to see all the interesting things that people come up with when deep learning is made more easy and understandable.